Hey Rush, welcome to Newcastle. Um, Thanks. First question on the list. I hear you're a bit of a dab hand at playing poker. Oh fucking hell. Uh, do you want to enlighten us on this? Uh, yeah, it's one of my hobbies I like to do in my spare time when I'm not DJing or not in the studio. When I'm sort of relaxing at home, I like to go on the internet and play a bit of online poker. I played a bit live as well, I go to Vegas two or three times a year and play some of the cash games and tournaments over there. And I've actually made quite a few friends in the poker scene that, that have become sort of good friends of mine. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a hobby really, just a hobby that I've got a passion for. And it helps pay a few of the bills. Do you see yourself making your way out of DJing into that? Nah. nah. I love DJing. I love DJing. Even if I won a million pounds playing poker, which probably will never happen. But even if I did, I'd still DJ. Virus Volts. Yeah. Are you going to see another one? If we can find the dats, yeah. Really? A lot of the tunes that we wanted to put on the original Virus Volts, we just couldn't find. So we had to kind of do with what we had, basically. But there's a lot of stuff that I reckon we still can find it. We've got so many boxes in the studio of old crap that we're still yet to go through. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of time. But hopefully, fingers crossed, some of those old ones will come out and uh, we'll be able to put our hands on them. But who knows? Raven, you and Optical, how are you? Um, we're both from the same part of London. Um, we're both from Tom and Roland. We both cut our dub plates at Music House. And we were both complete weed heads. So it was inevitable that, and we both like the same style of drum and bass. Mm. So it was inevitable that one day we were going to cross paths and, you know, talk, start talking. About, as soon as we started talking about music, it was all over. Within a week, we were in the studio together making beats. We had a similar upbringing, similar taste in music we grew up on, and all that crap. So, yeah, it just, just happens. Just, just happens. And uh, our communication in the studio is uncanny. Wormhole is celebrated is one of the most influential albums of all time. That's very nice. As far, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Do you ever that. feel like you've got to live up because of that? Not really, because the style changes so much. Like If you look, listen to Wormhole now and listen to what's popular at the moment in drum and bass, it's chalk and cheese. It's so different. So, the last couple of albums, we kind of tried to stick with the times, but the one that's coming out, the most recent one, we've kind of gone back to the Wormhole days. Not as far as production goes, but as far as the sounds and so it's basically the old wormhole ideas and sounds, but kind of with modern production, so to speak. So I'm quite excited about that. Well, my next question. A lot of people cussed us for Chameleon, saying, "Oh, it's trying to be this and trying to be that and blah blah blah." But the thing that everyone forgot was we made Chameleon for live, for a live set, to go out on the road with instruments and play it on stage. That was the whole idea behind that album. So it's your it's your sound, like deep down, always being the way more sound. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you heard from the set tonight, it's all basically dark mm. funk tunes, is what, is what I love. So, yeah. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Right then, you know, Father? Yeah. yeah. How's that thing you like? Um, it's made me manage my time a lot better. No more sitting in the studio for 16 hours, sort of, you know, taking eight hours over one bass sound. Now we're like a lot more constructive with our time. Okay, we've got five hours in, let's get on with it, heads down. I've stopped smoking weed as well, which has helped me knowing. So since <laughs> having a child and stopped smoking weed, my life's kind of completely changed. I used to think that I needed it to help me make music and all that kind of stuff, but that's bullshit at the end of the day. It's good for you, mate. But yeah, as far as the baby goes, inspiring, gives you a new direction, helps you manage your new time, makes you realise what life is all about, and just brings your life and you and your partner so much closer together. It's, it's everything you've heard and more. Wicked, mate. Especially little girls. I mean, you know, daddies and their little girls, it's kind of special. There's something special about that. <laughs> oh, is she, she a daddy's girl or mummy's girl? Oh, she's a daddy's girl is for she? sure, yeah. <laughs> she's got me wrapped around her little you finger. You've got that one sorted along the way. Right then, is one of your major influences, you've mentioned Spiral Tribe before. Yeah. In some of your interviews. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? It was just really my introduction to electronic underground music. Um, I grew up listening to electro and early hip hop stuff. and. Uh, when hip-hop was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the first time I ever heard 
European or English electronic music was at a free spiral tribe party. And that's kind of what converted me and got me into the whole movement, basically. Early hardcore stuff. Right. Obviously, you've been listening to drum bass for a long time from the start. Um, you play out a lot. Mm. Do you ever get bored of it? No. I think there's enough good music around at the moment. Um, and this goes back to the whole weed smoking thing. Since I stopped smoking weed, I've enjoyed DJing so much more. Like the last two years for me, it's been um, almost a turnaround. Just the energy I've got in my sets and the way I think about my sets and stuff, I'm thinking about it all week. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Whereas when you walk around in a stoned haze all the time, you, can't, you don't know you're asking your elbow all the time. And you're under this illusion that everything's cool and you can get on with it, but you're really just living in a fucking cloud. So yeah, just the whole energy I've got towards the music as far as production and DJing and everything, the last two years has been, I feel like, I, I feel like I've got a new lease of life. Fucking hell, it's like a regular bottle factory in here. What the fuck? You're just going to put the, the, really put the camera <laughs> down, we're just going to sort them out a sec. Right, you played up in Newcastle a few times. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're all very disappointed not to see you last time because of problems with flights and shit weather that we have here in England, you couldn't take off. Yeah. What we were ready to drive up here and everything, oh, mate, but we, yeah. we were told there wasn't time, so we didn't bother. We were, we're sat in the car saying, we're ready, let's go. Right, no, by the time you get here, the party will be done, so we were so pissed off about that. Everyone was really upset. Yeah. We had, we had John B. Phil, so that made up for it. Yeah, well, there you go. I fucking <laughs> and love Newcastle. Them. Well, I mean, I don't have to lie or make anything up. They are the foundation of the North, as far as the music goes. We're looking at 10 years now. Yeah. How many promoters or companies can look back on 10 years and say, well, we've been doing this consistently for the last decade? Only a handful in the UK. And this is, this is the foundation of the whole scene. So, I mean, hats off to them. They're in a great club. Started off at the university. It's all built up. They've got a great following and it's very strong. Very strong up here. Out of all the places you've played, where would you say are some of your favourites? And where have you like enjoyed your sets most? Where have been the best setup sort of thing? And as far as like being abroad and seeing different parts of the world, so blessed with that. It's just you know forever grateful for that. I love Japan. I love Puerto Rico. I love Las Vegas for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, I'm going to Bangkok next uh, next month, which I'm really looking forward to. I've never been to Thailand before. I'm going to Hong Kong, I know, <laughs> heard, but I'm married, so I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know about the lady boys and all that, yeah. <laughs> it's not my cup of tea. But um, just, there's so many places. I mean, Australia, New Zealand, especially New Zealand, is so raw and so fantastic. And they love the kind of music that I love, the kind of drum and bass that I love, they love over there. Look at people like The Upbeats, uh, Future Signal. So, and all the guys coming from that part of the world, they're into the sound that I love. Technical medicine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's such a raw part of the world. I mean, you can, the one time I was over there, we spent the morning on the beach and the afternoon we were snowboarding. I mean, where else in the world can you do that? Not many places. Hawaii's another fantastic, I mean, you know, I'm so lucky with the places I've been to. Um, yeah. 